Iwan Owen jest twórcą gadżetów do filmów, a także inżynierem samoukiem ze Stanów Zjednoczonych. W 2011 roku wrócił na YouTube wideo własnoręcznie zbudowanej mechanicznej ręki. Zobaczył je południowoafrykańczyk pozbawiony kilku palców i skontaktował się z Iwanem w celu stworzenia podobnej protezy, dostosowanej do wymiarów jego ręki. Panowie wymieniali się przez ocean kolejnymi projektami, a wymaganiem dla powodzenia budowy była łatwa dostępność materiałów. O ciekawej inicjatywie dowiedziała się następnie matka chłopca, któremu na prawej dłoni brakowało wszystkich palców. Owen podjął wówczas decyzję, że fragment dłoni wydrukuje na drukarce 3D. Udało mu się, a kolejni niepełnosprawni ustawiali się w kolejce po pomoc. Tak powstał ruch Enable, który zrzesza dziś 1500 projektantów i inżynierów, którzy przygotowali już ponad 400 protez. Za darmo, open source i na drukarkach 3D. What potential do you see in terms of 3D printing, how it may make life better for disabled people? So it has a, a wide range of potential. Uh, so in the immediate future, prosthetic hands and prosthetic arms will come down in cost. Uh, already there are designs out there that can be built for approximately 50 euros for, uh, for, upper, ex for upper extremity uh, devices. They're, they're just body powered, there's no electronics involved. Uh, but there are some designs from the Enable community that can be built for about $400 in materials that incorporate electronics as well. More sophisticated. Yes. So how it really works? How this prosthetic may work without electronics? So it's actually um, based on very old technology. Uh, there have been prosthetic devices that, that, that are operated without electricity for a very long time. Uh, in the instance of the hand, if they have a, a palm but no fingers, it would be their wrist motion that causes the fingers to close. If there's no hand at all, it's elbow motion. So it's relying upon motion from another part of the body, sometimes opposing shoulder, mm -hmm. to activate the device. Uh, what, what 3D... There's, there's just one movement. Grabbing yes. something. Yeah, just grabbing something. So, uh, so it's very limited in function, but 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 very low cost and easy to produce. Produce. Just 15 euros, right? Uh, fifty, approximately 50 euros, uh, and and so that's what th printing does. The 3D printing doesn't revolutionize the the way the prosthetic functions. It revolutionizes the way it's manufactured. Mm -hmm. So they're they're different because rather than y relying on mechanical motion from the body, uh, th those versions read electrical signals from muscles that the person still has, which then sends a signal to the motor to close or open. Uh, so in theory, eventually, uh, the, the design that's that the Enable community has currently only opens and closes, but later this could lead to open and close, rotate, uh, ad adding additional motions onto what the uh, the hand could do. Mm -hmm. And they're using the sensors created for computer games, am I right? Um, so the, the current design in the Enable community is using a very specific sensor. Um, my students at the University of Washington Bothell are working with an armband that was designed for controlling computers or for controlling video games. Um, and they're working with that in combination with some other technologies to make an easier to assemble version of, of the, um, the robotic arm. So it was just like that. You are publishing something on your website and then people all around the world can print whatever they want. That's the correct. So that's the model that the Enable community uses, which is we, we, we do research and development, we create a version of something and then that gets released on the internet where people can download it for free and uh, either use it or uh, experiment with it and improve upon it. So that's what's really led to the success of the community is, is so many people contributing to the design process. Um, the Enable community is now working on getting into deeper research, finding ways of helping prosthetists and clinicians that want to use this technology to start using it in their, in their medical practice. Uh, so that's kind of the new area of focus for, uh, w one of the new areas of focus for the Enable community. And how many people, for example, in the United States need that kind of prosthetics? Oh, well, for what the Enable community offers, I, I'm not sure what the statistics on that are. But for, um, for the need of prosthetics in general, which I have to note, the, 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 the devices in the Enable community can only serve a very specific subset of the population. Um, but the population of amputees in the United States is approximately 2 million. Uh, so, you know, for a country of 300 million people. And, and that, that rate of need is higher in some countries where there's active wars going on. Uh, it's lower in other countries where th that are safer, let's say. Um, so it really depends on the country. Why those prosthetics are made only for specific 
amputees? Um, because there's so, so many different amputations that can occur, you know, legs, fingers, ar entire arms, etc. Um, the, the, the devices the, the Enable community has work for uh, people that are partial finger amputees, uh, partial hand amputees, or entire hand amputees. Um, we don't really have anything for above the elbow. Um, and certainly nothing for entire arm, no legs. Just, just basically from here, from here forward uh, is where, what the, uh, the devices that the Enable community produces uh, address. Mm -hmm. And what is your, I think I guess in like something like this competition, because I think about uh, the United States as a very developed country where there are very sophisticated prosthetics for, for amputees. Mm -hmm. Is that true or there are really a lot of people who don't have kind of prosthetics? Yeah. Um, it, it is very true. Uh, but, but the United States is an advanced country with a wide range of, of options available, but the, 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 the difficulty is most of those options are inaccessible to the average United States citizen and, and certainly to the average global citizen. Um, there are robotic arms, for instance, that have, full, that have a lot of function, but they cost more than $20,000 US. So, you know, um, which would be, I don't know, more than 18,000 euros. Uh, so uh, it's, and, and while insurance will cover a portion of that cost, the portion that remains that the patient has to pay out of pocket is still so high that most people are not, aren't able to access, access those devices. What potential do you see in terms of other disabilities may help people with different disease? Um, it, it can. Uh, so uh, now the kind of printers that are required are, are far, far higher tech than the ones that we've been using for the hands because they need different capabilities. But um, there's a man in the UK named Tal Goldsworthy that invented a process to create uh, using 3D printing to help him create a, a sleeve to go around the aorta of his heart, uh, which literally saved his life. And uh, now there are over, I think, over 40 people that have had the surgical procedure done. 3D printing is absolutely essential to that process. Um, it's been used for medical implants. It's been used for uh, uh, Invisalign braces, uh, the, the, you know, the braces that fit around your teeth that are clear. Th those use 3D printing uh, to produce that product. So it's actually affecting a lot of areas in the healthcare industry. What do you think about the future of 3D printing? Will, it, will the 3D print printer will be in every home in the world or there will be just a uh, specific usage of 3D printers? I, I don't, I think that it won't be in every home in the world, um, but it'll, it'll be a lot like, it'll be a lot like a, a hand, uh, like a, a power saw, right? Not everyone has a power saw in their house, uh, but, but the people that have a need for one can easily can 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 reasonably get, gain access to it and then have it in their home. Mm -hmm. So I think that we'll see the same thing with 3D printers. For 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 those that it's a solution for something in their day-to-day -day lives, they'll be able to obtain one, and then they'll have it in their home. So you know somebody that is missing fingers, like um, I know a, a young man named Peregrine Hawthorne, he doesn't have any fingers on one of his hands. He now owns a printer and he builds his own hands. So when, when he, 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 like, he, uh, he does a lot of manual labor. So when he breaks a plastic finger, he prints out a new one at home and then replaces it. So that's an example. And I think that we'll, we'll see that as the future progresses is that people that have a specific need will, will obtain them. Okay, thank you very much for your interview. Yeah.